Okay, have a read of the question. This one's about reactive monitoring measures. Not, rea uh, not active or proactive or leading uh, monitoring measures. Let's have a look at what the candidate put. There are many systems that can be monitored following the recent accident to improve the general health and safety of the organization. Proper monitoring of accident and incident rates will give information about changes that may need to be made. Not incorrect, but like there's no marks available yet because they haven't said this. This is what I refer to as sort of like preamble, which it, you're not going to get marked down for it, but it doesn't actually attract marks on its own. The shift manager advises that accidents do not happen often, so there is no need to keep a manual record. However, other workers state that accidents and near misses frequently occur, but are not formally reported. Again, no marks there because it's just basically regurgitating stuff directly from the scenario. Okay, let's go on to the next paragraph. A proper risk management system needs to be put in place to ensure hazards are clearly identified and addressed. Risk assessments need to be kept up to date. The current risk assessments for the ovens and the other machinery are very out of date. So that does gain marks then. So a couple of marks there. Staff turnover statistics need to be recorded. And reasons for the staff leaving to be noted and learned from. That's mark worthy. Okay, so we're three marks in. This is getting better. It is clear that staff turnover is high based on the fact that quite a lot of people had received first aid training, but many of those have since left the organization. Okay, next chapter, uh, next paragraph. Proper training needs to be provided to all staff that is relevant to their job role and records of training need to be kept. There's not much training, uh, there's not much in the way of training at the moment as directors feel it's wasting working time. All new staff need induction training immediately after joining the organization as currently induction training takes up to six weeks to be carried out. So we've got a mark available. If the newly promoted maintenance engineer had proper training in his job role, then he would have been able to deal with the conveyor collapse without putting his life at risk. So I'm going to give another, I've got the opportunity to give another mark. Okay, this is looking good. Inspections and maintenance of machinery needs to be carried out regularly and recorded appropriately. I think that's supposed to say and separately. So that is certainly a mark. I'm hoping that they're going to link this to the scenario. The maintenance for another, that would be another mark. Um, the maintenance engineer does not keep a record of inspections and maintenance other than in their work diary, which is not an appropriate form of documentation. That is worth another mark. So, okay, next paragraph. Workers need to be given a platform to raise complaints or concerns regarding health, safety and welfare issues. There are currently no health and safety reps in the organization for staff to raise any safety issues. If workers had a platform to raise concerns, they would likely feel less pressure to cut corners when it comes to health and safety. So I'm gonna give a mark for the first part there. Complaints by the workforce. Absent statistics can be recorded and learned from. True. That's a mark. Let's see if they can link it to the scenario. Following the accident, the workers who helped to rescue their colleagues from the oven were traumatized by what they had seen and had to take extended periods off work to recover from the trauma. Good use of information from the scenario. That's another mark. Following the accident, the bakery was closed for two weeks while an investigation took place. The findings of this investigation will help the organization learn about what went wrong and what improvements can be made to health and safety to prevent future accidents of this kind. Good, that's a mark there. Um, 
last paragraph. Financial losses should be monitored and learned from. There are several financial losses resulting from the accident. Firstly, the cost resulting from enforcement actions totaling £350,000 in fines. That is... worthy of a mark. The organisation would also have to pay out compensation to the families. True, but there's no, I can't give a mark based on the mark scheme of the accident. The cost of the bakery being shut for two weeks, cost of clients, loss of clients, sorry, paying out wages for workers on sick and for that of their replacements. That might not be a problem though, because I think we've got full marks here. Let's have a count up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, twelve. 12 out of 10, full marks, and then room to spare. That was a good answer. Let's just have a quick, how many words were written there? Ew, uh, word count, uh, 532 words. Okay, so that's that's a good, that's a good answer there. Um, have a look at it. Um, see if it helps you. I hope it does. See you in the next one. Before we continue, if you're considering a move towards working in health and safety, it's absolutely essential that you're well prepared. That's why I want to take a quick second to let you know that you can study for the IOSH Managing Safely or the NEBOSH General Certificate, both national and international versions, online with us at Stockwell Safety. So if you're ready to take the first step towards a rewarding career in health and safety, see the links in the description to explore our industry-leading e-learning, IOSH and NEBOSH courses. Okay, this question is 20 points in total, subdivided into part A and B. Part A is five points, part B is 15 points. This is around emergency procedures. So let's take a look. Part A first. Part A is why do emergency procedures need to be developed? Emergency plans are essential in the handling of emergency events. They are required to be developed for the following reasons. Evacuation, to get people away from the immediate and residual danger of the emergency. This is to include having sufficient emergency exits which are marked and unobstructed. Needs of less able, less abled people and emergency lighting. Yeah, I'm gonna, there is a, I can give a mark for that. Some emergency services are responsible. People must be designated to summon and assist emergency services. This should be someone with responsibility uh, they are required to call for assistance without delay and provide detailed specific information. They are then to assist the arrival and access of emergency vehicles. No mark there. Handle casualties. Dedicated first aiders are to assist any casualties prior to the arrival of emergency services. First aiders are required to be trained and have their training refreshed regularly with routine drills. The way I'm reading this is it, it's as if the uh, learner has read the question as being what should be included in emergency procedures rather than why they need to be developed. Subtle difference perhaps but I think it's taken the learner slightly off where they need to be with this one. Liaise with emergency services. Competent persons are to liaise with emergency services throughout the process. If the event is serious, they may hand over responsibility to the police. Or, or maybe it's as if the learner has sits, sort of read it as what needs to be considered when developing uh, emergency evacuation procedure or something. Protect property. Where it is safe to do so, property should be protected. This includes the isolation of power sources, fuels and gases to prevent further damage, loss. This can include vehicles and objects in addition to just buildings. 
I'm going to give a mark there. It's a bit of a fudge. It's not exactly hitting what is on the mark scheme, but it's close enough that I can kind of give the benefit of the doubt. Staff coordination, having trained workers who are competent and go through regular and realistic drills are able to competently help during an event rather than being a hindrance, potentially giving false information that could worsen the event. Up to that point, yeah, I'm happy to give the mark. So three out of five could have been a bit more, uh, a bit better, I think if the learner had kind of reread the question, I'd just get a sense that the learner misread the question slightly, but still got three out of five, so not too bad. Uh, by the way, the learner wrote 700 words for both um, parts A and B combined, which is about right. So moving on to part B then, let's get this lined up. So. Part B is <clears throat> what could have contributed to the failure of the emergency arrangements when dealing with the recent accident. Okay, let's have a look. A common thing that happens with this particular question, I don't know if this learner has done this, we'll see in a minute, but a common thing that does happen is people misread this part as well. It's as if they read what could contribute to the fa to the failure of emergency arrangements, full stop, um, and then it leads them to talk about to talk in generalities rather than the specific incident, and they usually lose some marks as a result of that. But let's have a look. From reading the scenario during the accident, there were many factors that could have contributed to the failure of any emergency procedures. To begin, it seems that the overall health and safety culture is not positive. In the text, it states that management encourage workers to cut corners in terms of safety to increase production. With this attitude, it is suggested that emergency procedures and training are most likely glossed over. Instead, there should be a recorded and practiced plan for all events. And again, I think this is just is not going to gain any marks. Um, not for that bit anyway. Let's see if we're getting any, any marks in the following passages. Following from this, there was no leadership during the event. It states that no one took charge, which delayed getting the workers out of the oven. This is a bit better. Could give a mark here. The duty manager or other competent person should have been dedicated to taking the responsibility of any accidents. This way workers would have clear instructions of how to handle the situation. Related to leadership, there is no mention of emergency services being called. That's mark worthy. This should have been done without hesitance. If Efficient work with the emergency services could have been life-saving. When considering the workers on shift, there was no maintenance engineer on shift. In the text, it states that the maintenance engineer only worked day shifts. This suggests that not full workforce are on every shift. If the business intends to work at full production rates, they must have a full workforce during all shifts including nights, holiday cover, etc. In addition to this, there was no first aider on shift. During every shift, there should be at least one trained and dedicated first aider. It is essential to have the capability to care for any casualties prior to the arrival of emergency services. This is a lack of care and training. So the fact that there was no first aiders is uh, worthy of marks, uh, a mark. On the subject of training, no staff on shift had ever witnessed any failures of this type and did not know how to repair. Does that, I think that means respond. It's supposed to mean respond. This was the main cause of the accident. This lack of competent people is a failure in planning. 
it's a bit too general. Regardless of workers being untrained in repairs, oh, they did mean repair then. Regardless of workers being untrained in repairs, there was no recorded procedure of any machine failures. I don't really know what that means. No recorded procedure for machine failure, I think that's supposed to mean. Written procedures should have been written and provided for all possible issues. This includes procedures for entering ovens. Okay, so we've got a mark there. A procedure in entering the ovens would have ensured that power had been isolated, not just turned off, and that the oven was fully cold prior to entering. It would also have stated the correct method of entering. Yeah, there's another mark here. Without these procedures, workers were told to access a dangerous environment with no knowledge or any health and safety instruction. They also had no knowledge of evacuation routes. Therefore, delay in escaping did occur. Yeah, I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt again. It's one of those ones where I'm not quite sure whether they hit the nail firmly on the head, but I think they do enough to gain another mark. The trapped workers could not get the attention of outside workers. This is another failure in any arrangements. Lone working of this type should never be allowed. They almost get a mark there, but um, not quite. So on, that's, that's the lot. So on part A, they got three out of five. On part B, one, two, three, four, five, six. 6 out of 15, so altogether 9 marks out of a possible 20.